The body's initial reaction to a virus, or any other pathogen, is inflammation. A set of mechanisms that allow different immune system cells and the killer molecules they produce to rapidly reach the site of infection. Blood vessels that carry immune system cells shrink, blood flow increases, and their walls become leaky. The master signal in promoting inflammation in the lungs is angiotensin II, whose concentration in blood increases dramatically upon a viral infection. This initial response is part of nonspecific innate immunity. It doesn't matter who the aggressor is. As a very powerful mechanism, it can be life-saving. As a very powerful mechanism left unchecked, it can be life-threatening. This is what we're seeing in the COVID-19 epidemic. Let's take a look at how a lung epithelial cell responds to a benign coronavirus, like HCoV-229E, that causes the common cold. HCoV infects cells by attaching to a membrane protein called aminopeptidase N, APN. As this happens, parts of the virus surface molecules, PAMPs, are recognized by the innate immune system, leading to the production of angiotensin II, or ANCH2. The battle begins. To prevent excessive inflammation, ANCH2 can be inactivated by a membrane-bound enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme 2, or ACE2. ACE2 converts ANCH2 into angiotensin 1,7, which has the opposite anti-inflammatory effects. But at this active phase of infection, ANCH2 is very much needed. So the cell expresses an inhibitory membrane protein, angiotensin type 1 receptor, or AT1R. AT1R does two things. It binds to ACE2 and inactivates its enzymatic activity. It serves as a receptor to ANCH2, promoting more inflammatory responses. The two proteins are then endocytosed. AT1R leaves the endosome and returns to the cell membrane to capture another ACE2, causing more inflammation. At the same time, the endocytosed ACE2 reaches a lysosome where it is degraded. So, there's nothing to stop further inflammation. But this is when the cell starts doing something very clever. It produces nitrous oxide, NO, an event which is a turning point in the immune response. NO activates a sibling of AT1R, the angiotensin type 2 receptor, AT2R. Its function is to reduce inflammation. It also associates with ACE2, but in so doing, it activates the conversion of ANCH2 to the other signaling molecule, angiotensin 1,7 or ANCH1,7. ANCH1,7 then binds to its own receptor, mass, leading to a decrease in inflammation, just the opposite of ANCH2. In this way, the cell can maintain immune homeostasis, a balanced level of inflammation, strong enough to fight the infection, but not too strong, so that no tissue damage occurs. NO also primes the activation of adaptive immunity, which eventually leads to the production of virus-specific defense mechanisms and ultimately immunization. The cell is now in an optimal condition to fight pathogens and promote healing. What about SARS-CoV-2? What makes it potentially so much more dangerous than benign coronaviruses? The first fundamental difference is the receptor used by the virus to enter the cells. It is ACE2 itself, the only enzyme that can degrade ANCH2. 
the infection proceeds similarly to other coronaviruses, endocytosis, viral entry into the cytoplasm, replication, the return of AT1R to the cell surface, increase in inflammation, degradation of endocytosed ACE2. But there is another difference with a dire consequence. The NO, instead of activating anti-inflammatory mechanisms, reacts with superoxide that the cell produces as part of its stress response. As a result, SARS-CoV-2 binding and infection proceeds as before, the cell fails to reach immune homeostasis, and there is no priming of adaptive immunity. ANCH2 activity increases unrestrained. Severe COVID-19 infections can be seen as angiotensin II poisoning. What biological target should one choose to best help critically ill patients? Is ACE2 a good target? We don't think so. ACE2 plays a vital role in the organism and safety of ACE2 binding drugs may be a major issue. How about drugs that would inhibit viral replication? While these may work to some extent, they are unlikely to help develop immunization that is ultimately necessary for healing. This leaves us with AT1R, and we believe this is a better choice by far. AT war antagonists would preserve ACE2 functions. They would support reduction of ANG2 driven inflammation. They exist as approved drugs such as Lozartan or Valsartan. They're affordable, easy to manufacture, and they're safe. We are a group of doctors and researchers that believe that AT1R antagonists, such as Lozartan or Valsartan, will provide substantial clinical benefits to acutely ill SARS-CoV-2 infected patients. They should be tested without delay. We need your help to get the message across to all decision makers in the current medical emergency. Please support our call for action by letting us add your name to the list of doctors and researchers that believe that AT1R antagonist may be a good way to close the door to Corona. On behalf of the Second Front, I'm Vanya LaRoche, molecular biologist and science storyteller.